Hi everybody, I'm David Lee from Base Boss, and uh, we're here to introduce the idea of sub setup in venues. How to get the best out of your subs in various types and sizes of venues, um, where you should put your subs and uh, whether they should be together, whether they should be apart, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so if you're watching this, hopefully you're interested in that topic, and uh, this should answer some of your questions. One subwoofer, whether it's on the left or the right. Doesn't really matter. Center, also good. Uh, there's always trade-offs. There's always compromises. Um, point being, though, that if you have a sub, and that's all the sub that you have, all you need to be aware of is that your subwoofer level and your tops level have to be balanced. So you just have to be aware that your, sub, your tops might be able to get louder than your sub can keep up with. So you may want to lower the gain, the, the input sensitivity, on the tops so that you get a balanced sound and that would be the place to start. And then the next thing we have to deal with is uh, the acoustics of structures. And this is a very complicated subject, one that's way beyond the scope of a little video like this. Uh, however, sound bounces around inside of rooms like ping pong balls inside of a metal box. I mean, it, 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 it goes back and forth and you're gonna find places where there are going to be peaks and valleys, um, anti-nodes and nodes. And so where you put your subwoofer can make a big difference. The closer you put a subwoofer to a wall, um, the shorter the wavelength that it's going to have reflection issues with. So in other words, uh, bass is long wavelength, so closer to a wall is good if you don't want to deal with the reflections coming off the wall. So in one particular case, you can imagine in a relatively small space, if a DJ is setting up with a sub or two subs, having the setup as close to the wall as possible and having the subwoofers against the back wall it's actually a good scenario because you don't have the sound leaving the subwoofer, wrapping around, going back to the wall behind the sub, and then coming back forward again. Because when it comes back forward again, it's late and it's out of phase at certain frequencies. And the frequencies that, it's, that it will be, or frequency specifically, but range of frequencies that it'll be canceling varies with how far away the wall is from the speaker and how far away the listener is from both the speaker and the wall. So you get this peaks and valleys happening because the subwoofer is away from the wall. If you put the subwoofer against the wall and you back your DJ desk as close to the wall as possible, comfortably speaking, then even if your tops are slightly forward of the sub, which will put them a little early, you won't have as much of an issue with the wall canceling frequencies in the base region where the subwoofer is kind of most important. That, that's the energy that you really want to put in the room. So that's a little trick that you can use. Put the subs right against the wall. And when I say right against the wall, I mean touching the wall. And a little trick is don't put the backs of the subs against the wall so they're facing out into the room. Put the subs so that they're facing along the wall, so that the cone is right facing along the wall, and if you have two of them, you can either put them back to back against the wall facing opposite directions, or you can put them separated from each other facing towards each other with a gap in between roughly the width of the cabinets so that the sound can escape out the center. That gives you the loading of the wall um, and the combination of both of them center loaded, and that'll give you a nice big hit. Sometimes if you're of a mind to have a lot of bass as the DJ, you can put it right behind you. You can also put it off to one side or the other. It's not gonna make a huge difference out in front of the audience unless there's a wall right next to you, like if you're stuffed in a corner. If you are in a corner, you can actually use the corner to load the subs. So you can actually face the subs, you know, one on top of the other into a corner, so that you literally put them about 18 inches, maybe as much as two feet, probably not much as two feet from the wall, maybe even one on top of each other and facing into the corner. That way it uses that wall to load the sound into the room and you don't get what you would normally get if you didn't have them there, which is the reflection from the speaker to the wall and back again and you get all these peaks and valleys in the room. So those are little setup tricks that you can use to maximize the output of the subwoofers that you're using uh, in the context of highest possible level and, and uh, depth of bass in the space that, that you can produce with the subwoofers that you have. Now, other than that, you've got 
you know, e that's either one or two subs, you're, you're gonna have the same principles. If you have a left and a right subwoofer and you have a mid and a high on top of it, you're gonna have a stereo system. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you can't be right up against a wall, try to be further away from a wall because the energy that comes off the speakers wraps around and goes everywhere. That's because the wavelength is longer than the speaker. And again, more information than we need to cover here. But the sound's gonna wrap around the speaker, it's gonna go everywhere. So it's gonna hit the first surface that it comes in, up against, which is usually either the back wall or a side wall. Sometimes it's a ceiling. And then it's gonna bounce off. And so if you're further away from the wall, it loses energy as it travels because it's covering not just distance, but it's covering space in all directions. So it's losing energy as it propagates. So when it hits the wall, the further away the wall is, the less energy is gonna come back and cause cancellations. So if you have to be up against a wall, go right against the wall. If you can be away from the wall, get as far away from the wall as you can practically be to minimize the reflections that, you, that are gonna influence the sound experience. Um, as far as anything else, as far as setups, um, working with balancing your levels is, is, is the other key that I mentioned in the beginning. Adjust the levels to where the sound quality balances the amount of low end and the amount of high end. Very, very often, People want more, well, <laughs> almost inevitably, people want more low end energy than they do mid and high energy. Our ears are more sensitive to the higher frequencies. Um, everybody's heard of Fletcher Munson and the uh, sensitivity curve. So we can tolerate a lot of low frequency energy. So we like that energy, it puts the energy in the room. If we make the bass energy louder, what happens is that we turn our speakers up and the subs just can't go any louder. So there's a limit to how loud they'll go. Of course, you can add more and, and get ridiculous, but realistically, your tops can usually overpower them. So you just have to watch that you don't leave the tops to go there. So you maybe have to back them down and pay attention when you're playing, listen to it, because subs, our subs and, and, and most subs out there will have limiters. So they'll get to a certain level and they'll just stop getting louder. They might get more distorted and they might not sound as good, but they'll just stop getting louder. But the top boxes, a lot of times, they'll have more headroom, so they may be able to get ahead of that. So listen for that, keep the levels on your tops down um, and adjust as the night progresses because you'll start at a low level and it might sound wrong, it might sound too boomy at that point, so you, you may want to turn the bass down. Uh, in the earlier part of the night, and then as things come up, you can bring that up, but watch that you don't go over the limit of anything, ideally. And that's a, a whole other video that we'll do on setting up your mixer uh, to your speakers, whatever speakers you have, and being able to make sure that what you see on your board is going to be relevant to what your speakers are doing. So hopefully that information was helpful, and um, we look forward to seeing you soon.